My name is Hannah McCulloch and I'm the National Coordinator for Local Child Poverty Action Reports with the Improvement Service. That role involves supporting local government and health boards with the implementation of local child poverty action reports and sharing good practice around what can be done to reduce child poverty at local level. So why did we decide to use this webinar to focus on data and child poverty today? Well, clearly having access to the right data is an important part of ensuring that local partners can take the most effective action to tackle child poverty. Understanding the prevalence of child poverty in a local area, its location and its depth, helps, helps us to build an understanding of the scale of the problem, the extent of need and how to target our resources effectively. Data can also help build a picture of the opportunities and the barriers that might exist for families by telling us about the conditions in the local area, like the availability of jobs, of childcare, the cost and afford affordability of housing and transport. And data on the population is also vital. We know that certain household types are significantly um, at higher risk of, of experiencing child poverty. So the six priority groups that are highlighted in the local guidance, those are lone parent households, families with three or more children, families that have a baby under one, BME households, households in which someone is disabled and households in which the mother is aged 25 or under are far more likely to experience child poverty. So considering the prevalence and location of those groups in the local area can help us to build a better understanding of their needs and the kind of support that might be effective, as well as getting an understanding of whether we're managing to, to reach them with services and support. Although it's important to say at this point that engaging with people with lived experience of poverty is obviously also integral to that and we don't have time to go into that aspect of things today but hopefully uh, we can talk about that at another webinar in the future. The other thing that data can potentially do of course is to help us track progress and change in rates of poverty over time and that's something I just wanted to talk about in a wee bit more detail because it's probably the question that I get asked most in relation to, to data and child poverty. So the question relates to the Child Poverty Scotland Act 2017. And as many of you know, that act sets ambitious targets for the reduction of child poverty in Scotland against four key income based measures to be achieved by 2030 with interim targets set for the year 2023-2024. And what I wanted to highlight is that there, there's not currently the data available at local level to establish local progress against the majority of these particular measures. And John McKendrick will go into that in more detail and probably with more, with more clarity. But I also wanted to highlight that the duty on local authorities and health boards under the Child Poverty Act isn't necessarily to meet those targets in their local area. Some areas might already have surpassed the interim targets, some may have a lot further to go than others. And the, the legislative duty is rather to report on what is being done at local level, what local partners plan to do to contribute to the meeting of those targets at national rather than local level. So while we would always encourage local partners to have those targets at the forefront of their minds and to act in a strategic way that will impact those, those figures over time by increasing family income and reducing family outgoings, there's no need to be overly focused or, or fixated on identifying the data that establishes progress towards those four targets at local level. Instead, when we're thinking about the effect that actions are having, local partners might want to focus more on the data that is available or which they can collect and indeed the monitoring and evaluation of their policies to understand the reach and impact that they're having and this should help local partners both reassure and challenge themselves that they are doing everything that they can to contribute to those targets at national level and most importantly to lift as many children as possible out of poverty. Now we can hand over to the, the first speaker which is Professor John McKendrick of the Scottish Poverty and Inequality Research Unit. Thanks, John. Talking about teeny tiny use, a little use and mission critical. Um, and this refers to three data geographies. So the three data geographies I want to touch upon are national data, national data that can be disaggregated to the local level and local data. And I just want to draw a conclusion at the end. So let's talk about national data to start with. Now, Hannah's mentioned then that the driver behind these local uh, local focus and the local action reports uh, is the Child Poverty Act of 2017. And it sets these four targets. Now, I'm not going to dwell on these four targets, but Hannah made a really important point in the introduction there that what we don't have 
is we don't have local data that allows us to measure three of these four targets. We don't have local data to measure absolute poverty, combined low income and material deprivation, and persistent poverty. Now, with relative poverty, I'm going to go on to say a little bit more about that. But it's not the objective, as Hannah says, that we locally, over the next 10 years, as we move towards 2030, we measure these four targets. So what the national data, the, the Scotland level data, data for Scotland as a whole give us, gives us is, is figures such as this. Uh, big numbers, 240,000 children in Scotland, uh, two thirds living in a household with at least one adult in work. It gives us a sense of what the scale of the national challenge is. So this, uh, in my descriptor then, it's teeny tiny use in terms of what the, the local areas should be concerned with. This annual release of the, the Scottish data from the households below average income it tends now to be released in March each year. Now, it is teeny tiny use, so I'm not saying it's not at all useful. It might be useful locally if we need to inform those that are minded about the national state of affairs. You know, for people in the local areas that believe their responsibilities to contribute to these national goals, or if we flip that on its head, and for those that locally are con primarily concerned with local issues, but they need to know how these local actions are shaped by local priorities, then it's useful for us to understand uh, these national data, not the local data, the, the national data. But what it doesn't do really is it helps us shape local poverty actions. It just gives us a sense of that, that big picture. But even amongst those who, that, that want to have that sense of understanding how the local relates to the national, we must remember there are many people that have different views about poverty locally. Some won't think it's a problem, some people will think it's a problem, but it's actually poor people are to blame for the poverty they experience. Others at the other side of the, the spectrum would blame hidden hands and vested interest and perhaps the, the way that capitalism works, and that's why we've got poverty. So even these national poverty data are not necessarily going to land and make a difference to people locally. They will make a difference to those who believe that our anti-poverty interve interventions are not good enough, and that what we have to do is we have to make them work better. So I think it's an important point to note that these national data are not going to influence everybody locally, but they might have an influence for some. Now, these are the types of national data that can be disaggregated locally. And what we have here is a kind of league table approach. Uh, these are data uh, from the End Child Poverty Collective, which gives us an estimate, and I have to emphasise an estimate, of the extent to which low child poverty prevails across the 32 local authorities in Scotland. So we have a range of these national data that can be disaggregated locally so that we could perhaps benchmark, compare, uh, understand, and perhaps to a degree track changes through time. We have the HMRC have an estimate of the relative child poverty data uh, measured uh, um, in a before housing costs measure. A similar type of data is produced by the End Child Poverty Collective, which use the HMRC data but then factor in some modelling to give an after housing costs estimate of child poverty, which is the way in which we uh, measure poverty in the 2017 Child Poverty Act. But there are a whole set of other national data that can be disaggregated locally as well. Not poverty, but the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation gives us a sense of collections of, of deprivation. Again, not poverty, but a concept related to poverty for small areas. Three school meal registrations are um, reported on each year annually, which gives us a school-based level, uh, as well as being aggregated to the local authority level. Benefits data, likewise, can be available locally. These are national data, can be disaggregated locally. There are other data, data zone-based data, the data zone being that small unit of data collection that we use in Scotland. And of course, we have the Scottish Government's Local Child Poverty Dashboard, which pulls together a range of key data uh, and allows us to collect it or present these data for different local authorities. Now, I'm saying these are of a, a little use, these national data that can be disaggregated locally, because they can also be a distraction. We can get sidetracked with league tables, you know, become more focused in relative position uh, and where we are. I think one thing that's worth acknowledging, they can also be wasteful of local leads' time because it can lead to questions being asked, why are we not making progress despite the investment that we are making to tackle child poverty locally? Why is our overall level of child poverty not being reduced? Or why is child poverty in X authority uh, lower than in Y authority? So it can actually be a draw on our time and a distraction from what we are aiming to do. 
And I think the important point there is, of course, it can be a misleading evidence of local impact. Now, it's a harsh lesson, but I think it's important that we acknowledge that our control over low, low, um, child poverty locally is limited. We still have no control locally over national taxation. We have no control locally over welfare benefits uh, and the level at which they, they are remunerated. So we don't have control over two of the key levers which impact upon child poverty. And therefore, to use national data to evidence how effective our local impact is can be highly problematic. So these national data that can be disaggregated locally can also be problems. But we might, as I say, they may be of a little use because they can allow us to evidence the scale of the problem locally, and they often are in the local child poverty action reports. And because things change through time, and we'd like to think when we're having these uh, webinars in, in, in 20, uh, 28, that the, the, the type of discussion we'll be having will be different to the one we're having today, because we'd like to think the actions we're taking locally and nationally will be reducing child poverty. So we have to understand the nature of that local poverty at any given time. And as I said, I'd like to think that the poverty in your backyard will be very different in a few years' time than it is today. They can help us inform local actions and they can allow us to build a case for funding. But the critical question, do these national data that can be disaggregated locally, do they tell us if we are making a difference? Now, those of you who are up with your children's stories will, will recognise this uh, from the Emperor's New Clothes. And the key point is they don't. These national data are disaggregated locally, giving estimates of relative child poverty in a local area don't tell us whether our local actions are effective. And that, that's, the, I think, the key worry that we have is that we begin to misuse these data, that if there's no significant progress and reduction in the, the, the local data, it somehow tells us that we're doing the wrong things locally. Remember the point I made about taxation. Remember the point I made about Social Security. So let's move on to think about the local. This is what's mission critical not looking at national data, not looking at how national data is disaggregated locally, but thinking about the local issues that we need to focus on. This is where our energy is best spent locally. Uh, then here are just five examples of the types of data that we need for evidence-based policymaking, incorporating budget issues, oversight of programmes, monitoring programmes, evaluating specific programmes, or looking at generally the, the effectiveness of public programmes. There are challenges we have to face in using these local data. They have to be resourced. There has to be the local skills to enable the right conclusions to be drawn. It broadens out the range of people who are involved in collecting data, reflecting in data, and making decisions with data. Budgetary being one example there. There has to be buy-in to it that we believe it's worthwhile. And I think also we have to be prepared to let go. Because if evaluation is purposeful, it might mean that we are disinvesting from areas that we previously had invested in. So what we need to do is, in terms of data, we need a shift in focus to local intelligence for local actions. National data have a very limited and specific contribution to make, but that's all they are. The local has to be the focus uh, of our, our concerns. And that gives us a couple of issues, I think, in terms of national data we have to resolve. How can we evidence progress without determining this by league table positions and trends? And secondly, what do we really need from the Scottish Government? Now, we have that local government, uh, the, the dashboard of local areas, but we need to think about whether we really need effort to be uh, invested by the, the, the government analysts in generating these data and keeping us up to date.